your most growth for any character in one season ever. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Were you really excited to see exactly her trajectory as they started exploring it more and more? Uh, the interesting thing about Octavia is um, I had no idea where she was going. Uh, a year ago when I filmed episode one, so when I did the finale, I just find out on a week by week basis and you know the, the directors and the, the producers they give us so much freedom to explore the, that character dynamic on our own as actors. Um, so it was just really nice to have a character with such a big arch. I've never had a project like this before that I got to, you know, really chameleon my way through the entire season. Yeah, she became kind of like the super badass woman on the show. Yeah, she, she was very much a walls of type girl when she landed. She didn't want to hear, you know, hear it from anybody or anything. She, you know, she thought Clark was a buzzkill, her brother is a pain in her butt, you know, and then she meets, um, she's introduced to Lincoln, and I think, I think the Lincoln is where her core really starts to come from, because she realizes how he's being wrongfully accused of something, because he saved my life, and Octavia was wrongfully accused, because her crime was just being born, and so she felt her passion towards him, and therefore the, uh, the arch begins. And did you think that uh, Octavia and Lincoln would be a couple that fans would kind of take to immediately? No, no, I, I, I mean, I, I didn't even know that fans would take to the show in, in general. I knew we were doing great work, but, you know, you never know. If it was good. <laughs> I think it's something about the, this, this uh, don't eat the forbidden food, you know, mentality that's been around in so many wonderful stories for a time, like Romeo and Juliet, and it definitely has that parallel. Well, she even got to have like this big romantic relationship, and it seemed really founded on a strong love that just continued to new through the season. And it looks like that's where they might be starting in season two. They just continue to make insane sacrifices for one another, and um, you know, it's such heavy content on the show. You know, even though we're a group of kids, it's not like we're ever going fishing for the day, and like you know, it's never it's never light. They're always making really um, significant sacrifices. You mentioned um, previously about how you weren't, you weren't sure if anyone was going to watch the show. What's the difference between making it a show now that it has a fan base and you know that you're secure in there and before when you know what you see in the show? And it was kind of just, you guys are filming the show hoping that it would be a hit, and now it has. It's, it's very different. Um, even today, just being at Comic Con versus when I was here last year, um, we were just. We're telling people about this great show and you're gonna love it. But it hadn't even premiered yet, so it was, it was a tough sell. So um, now coming back this year, and just having the whole of fans so invested in our characters and really caring about them and following their arc and their story is uh, such an honor. Especially since it's not nominated for, a, for an Emmy. I don't think I think it's a to see that we read that. So pretty cool. That's wonderful. Yeah. We're all so proud. And, continue to deliver that work in season two. What was the most shocking moment for you from season one? I feel like every week when I get a script it's pretty shocking. I mean when Charlotte uh, killed Wells and like, killed herself, like it's just you know, it's pretty crazy. I'm like they're letting us put this on TV, you know? Um I used to put the envelope and um, it's pretty hard to shock viewers nowadays, but you have to do that. You know, you know, all these shows that are coming out nowadays that are huge hits um, are doing that. So we need to we need to compete with that to shock the viewers. Did you say anything about the butterflies in season two? I heard something something with the butterflies. Can you talk about that? Oh, it would in season two. Yeah. You were just told that there's a big thing with the butterflies in season two. There is. I haven't heard that. No. You haven't heard it yet? I mean, I know there was a butter I had a butterfly scene in season one, or else I'll is a very curious character, but I don't know, maybe you're getting spoiled. Okay. Maybe we need to talk about this yeah. later. I'd like to know. You follow me on Twitter. I'll DM you. Okay. I mean, the, the fact that the... Um, you know, the beginning of the season, I don't think anybody would have ever imagined, like, where it ended in the finale. It, it ended. I mean, it must be cool to be on a show like that. Like, 
the mild weather thing, I mean, I don't think anybody ever foresaw anything like that. Right. I mean, what do you think about being on a show like that? Um, it's just, it shocks me every time, and even just watching this isn't real now, um, and the new, um, did you guys see that, the, the unreleased scenes? Oh, it's, 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 it gives you a sneak peek of what Mount Weather is really about, and I'm um, sorry you missed it. Are we supposed to be scared of Mount Weather? <laughs> there is some scary, sketchy things that go on in Mount Weather. Oh yeah? yeah. Like experiment? <laughs> like, pardon? Experimentation? Yes, they're experimenting with different things for sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, we just heard it was a darker season, so we're trying to let our, our imaginations run a little wild. Yes, it is a darker season. <laughs> okay. Great. Thank you.